fell deeds awake. Now for wrath, now for ruin, and the red dawn, the Rohirrim ride to the channel. Here we are, the Rohan Battle Host, sent to me early by Games Workshop to review and paint up for all of you. So a huge, huge thank you to them for doing this. Rohan might well be my favourite. The Two Towers is my favourite of the films. And, well, when they come to the rescue of Minas Tirith in The Return of the King... Oh, there's nothing better. Oh, I'm just so happy to have this. I'm really, really excited to paint this. We are going to be painting all 32 miniatures in the box. There is a ton of plastic in here, and behind them, it is not less than half of what I'd hoped. <laughs> here we have it, 24 Warriors of Rohan. We have Eomer on horse and on foot. I've given him the sword rather than the spear. Although I'm sure I've got another Aomer knocking around somewhere. We can do another spear version at some point. We also get six Riders of Rohan in the box as well. So perfect little start to a Rohan battle company. And well, we're going to be doing all of this in one video. We're going to be starting with the Warriors of Rohan, moving on to the Riders, and then finally finishing off with Aomer, just like we did with the Isengard battle host. So grab your paints, grab your brushes, and get ready because, well, this is gonna be awesome. So the place we're gonna start is on all of the warriors of Rohan. And here they are. We've got these four, however, there are a bunch of them in the box. So I'm gonna be focusing on these four and well, they do all kind of have a few unique details, like particular weapons and different helmets and stuff, but these four together will be more than sufficient to demonstrate how to paint the entire of the 12. I don't have 12 painting handles. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are primed them all in grace here as we have the rest of the set. And the first color we're going to be using is Dark Angels Green. We're going to be applying this over the top of all of the cloaks and shields. So we'll grab that Dark Angel's green on our brush. We're just going to start with this guy. We're going to start with his uh, cloak. I'm just going to kind of come up here on the shoulder. I'm just going to start painting this all over, just like this, inside and out. But just be careful when you get close to like the what is sort of like the trousers and the shirt. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some wild wood. I'm going to use this on a couple of different places. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this wild wood over the top of the shirt and, well, what is essentially the trousers. It's kind of over any soft leather, which might seem a bit weird, but there's a lot of different kind of leathers and things going on here. We kind of want a nice bit of variation in the models. Just gonna apply this all over this like this. We're gonna apply this over the top of the belts. like 
like so. We're going to apply it to the inside of the shields. that and we're going to apply it to the throwing spears and to the bows as well like so just missed a bit of belt here a little bit of the undershirt there as well to the top part of the spear like that. What you're also going to do, which he doesn't have on display, is areas like this kind of baggy area around the arms. So this is the shirt part of the... kind of leather undersuit. So we're going to apply this to the haft of his axe. So with that wildwood applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Cygore Brown. I'm going to use this to paint in all of our hard leather details. Now this is going to be areas such as these kind of leather chest pieces. That some of them have. Like that. We missed a teeny little bit just there. Uh, we're going to be painting in the kind of leg braces. We're going to be painting any arrow quivers. Gonna be painting in the helmets. I'm also gonna be painting in, if they have them, any kind of wrist guards. Some of them don't have them though. So with that Cygore Brown applied to all of those details, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion. I'm going to use this to paint in the boots and the remaining parts of their undershirts. So for example, just here, painting the boots. his leg here as well. It's 
with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some skeleton hoard. I'm going to use this in three different places. And the first one is going to be on all of their hair. And we just want to layer this on. Just like that. Then we're going to apply this to all of their beards. Like that. And then on the shield, I'm basically going to colour in the whole of the design. And with that done, we then take some Gilliman flesh and we apply this to his skin. So we have their faces. We have their hands. And we have their necks as well. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the silver details. Now this is going to include their male shirts. Any blades, arrows, axe heads, spears, anything sharp. <laughs> So with that done, we're then going to take some thinned down Retributor armor. And we're going to apply this over the top of the, I don't know what it's called, this thing in the middle of all of the shields. It'll have a name. Someone in the comments will tell me what it is. We're going to do that. We're also going to apply this over the top of any kind of the pommel and the cross guard of the swords. Like that. And then on the helmets, we talked about optional gold. What you can do is you can just pick out little bits of it. For example, this horse head, we're going to pick out with the gold. I'm going to bring it down like that over the eyes. You could paint the whole thing if you wanted to. You just want to get a nice bit of variation here, like this sort of thing. So with that done, we've just got one color left to apply, and that is Flesh Terror's Red. Now we're going to be applying this to these two guys, that's why they're in my hands. So the first place we're going to be doing this is we're going to be adding this over the top of the little wrap on the bow. Like that. We're also going to be applying this to any fletchings or any arrows.
like that. And on our shield here, some of them have this kind of three horses in a line type thing, well, in a circle. And they've got this little bit of trim around the outside, and that's what we're going to apply our flesh terror's red to. So with that done, all of our base coats are now on on our Warriors of Rohan, so it's time to add some shades. And the first one we're going to add is Poxwalker. And we're going to be applying this all over the green cloaks. And it just adds this really lovely shade, as you can see, over the top of our Dark Angel's green. So with that pox walker all applied, it's still drying at the moment, but that's okay, because what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Targor Raid Shade, and we're going to use this to not shade the rest of the miniature, but shade quite a few different areas. This is our last shade. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this to shade all of our metallics, so the silver and the gold. And we're going to use this to shade the wildwood areas. So this area down here, but we're going to avoid the belts, and this way we create a really nice variation between our leather details. We've got the dark of the Seigel Brown, we've got the wildwood on the belts and the wood, and then we've got the shaded wildwood on the rest of the clothes, like this. And the reason I'm holding two of them at the same time is because we're not going to be shading the Seigel Brown armor. So you just want to avoid doing that. So with that now done, our warriors of Rohan are what I would call a war hipster battle ready. They're looking pretty fantastic already. However, we're not going to leave them there. No, we are going to take them to the next level and we're going to do this by adding just a couple of highlights. Not too many. Just enough to really make them pop on the tabletop. So the first one we're going to add is War Boss Green. I'm going to be using this to highlight all of the green. And we're just going to take a small amount of this on our brush and we're going to start picking out the edges now. One of the reasons why we didn't shade the shield is because, well, it would just be making it look just a little bit too dark. For our liking. It also makes this highlight here around the rim a little less impactful but still eye-catching. Nonetheless, like that. Similarly, on our cloaks, we're just going to start picking out the edges. So, with that war boss green applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some iron hand steel, use this to highlight all of the silver. So with that iron hand still applied, as you can see, what we're going to do is we're going to take some retributor armor. I'm going to relayer these things on the shield. Still hadn't looked it up. Let me know in the comments <laughs> what it's called. Uh, we're going to also just do a little highlight on any of the gold that we've got. 
anywhere else. On the helmets, for example, just like that. So with that gold all re-highlighted and re-layered, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Screaming Skull and we're going to use this to highlight the beards. We don't need to do the hair, we just want to do the beards. Just like that. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a teeny tiny tiny amount of Black Legion. Now this is optional, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. What we're going to do is we're going to take this teeny tiny amount of Black Legion and use this to paint in his eyes. And not all of them have visible eyes, any of the ones that have helmets with kind of face covers. I think she can't get to their eyes. And so with that done, just to finish off all of our Warriors of Rohan, we're going to take some Flayed One Flesh and we're going to use this to highlight their faces. Just like that. So with that done, all of our Warriors of Rohan are now finished. As you can see, we've got a sprue of 12 here. I probably won't get them all in hand. <laughs> but they look pretty awesome as a group. Really, really nice. Really, really cool. That's an entire sprue. So you get two sprues a lot of this in the box. Here's another couple of more familiar guys. And these guys. These ones. And finally, we have these two as well. So we're going to get them based up in just a moment. We're not going to film that, we're just going to go for a nice simple basing scheme for these guys. But what we are instead going to do is we're going to move on in just a moment to the Riders of Rohan. So here we have it then, Riders of Rohan. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to paint three different kind of horse recipes for you because the painting of the riders themselves it's exactly the same as the Warriors of Rohan. We'll cover it very briefly, but we're mostly gonna focus on the horses. I'm gonna do three recipes. So with that in mind, just take a few minutes, grab your paints, grab your brushes, and we'll come back with the horses. So our first horse recipe is going to be a nice black horse. And what we're going to do is we're going to take Black Legion here for this. And we're just going to pick a place to start. Now, helpfully, we've got the kind of tack and the saddle and stuff to kind of give us our, our sections within which to, to, to work. So we can make sure that we get some nice smooth coats. Although Black Legion is quite a nice paint for doing this anyway. So we're just going to get this Black Legion all over the horse including its hair. Just like this. So with that done, we're going to go from one end of the spectrum to the other. So we're going to go from a black horse to a very, very pale horse. 
So we're going to pop him to one side just for the moment. I'm going to grab up our next horse. And the colour we're going to be using first for this is Mortarian Grime. We're just going to be getting this all over all of the flesh of the horse. Don't worry about the hair for now. So with that done, I'm going to pop this horse to one side. Don't worry, it's not going to stay that colour. If you're worried that your horse now looks very, very ill, I'm going to now work on this horse. Our first colour that we're going to be using on this one is Garagax Sewer. Again, we're just going to put this all over the horse's flesh. We're not going to worry about getting this on the hair for now. So with that done, he's now drying, so we're going to put him to one side and we're going to go back to our black horse. And the colour we're going to be using now is we're going to shade him using some Targor Raid Shade. And we're going to use this only on the flesh. We're going to leave the hair as it is. So with that done, he's still drying at the moment, but we're going to pop him to one side. We're going to pick up our Mortarian Grime horse, and we're going to use some Seraphim Sepia now over the top of all of the horse's flesh. Just like this. Give it a really subtle brown shading. That is if you don't put too much on like I just did there. But if you do do that, you can just move it around with your brush. So with that done, what we're going to do, pop that to one side, and still sticking with the Seraphim Sepia, is we're going to use this now to shade our Garagax Sewer Horse. Sewer horse sounds terrifying. So with that done on these two, they're still wet at the moment, but what we're going to do is we're going to take some black legion. I'm going to use this to paint in the horse hair and the hooves. So we've got the tail, the mane, And of course, all four hooves. So there's three horse recipes. My arm hath been twisted. We shall do three more. <laughs> so we're going to grab up another one of our horses and the color we're going to be using on this particular horse, you're going to be taking some rattling grime. We're going to be applying this all over our horse's flesh. So with that rattling grime all applied to this horse, we're going to take some gore grunter fur and apply it to this horse. Much the same way. Just be very careful here about how we apply it. And so with that done, for our final horse, this is number six. <laughs> What we're going to do is we're going to take some soul blight grey 
I'm going to use this over the top of the horse's flesh. So with that done, starting in reverse order, we're going to add a couple of more shades. Uh, well, the next couple of colours, and on our white horse, that's going to be Nuln Oil. I'm going to apply this over the top of the hair, well, of the horse's tail. And the mane. Moving back on to our rattling grime horse, we're going to take some Nuln Oil. I'm going to use this over the top of the rattling grime. And with that done, we are then going to use some Seraphim Sepia to shade our Gorgrunter fur horse. So with that done, it's very much wet at the moment, but what we're gonna do is on both of these, the Rattling Grime and our Gorgrunter fur horse, is we're going to take some Saigor Brown. I'm going to use this to paint in the tails and the manes. So with that done, what we are going to do now is we're going to take some Black Legion. I'm going to use this to paint in all of their hooves, just like we did on the other three horses. So with that done, all six of our horses are now at the same rough level. These two as well. And we have this guy as well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna paint in the rest of the details on the horses, and then we are going to, well, do a couple of highlights here and there. Not too many, because some of these are already really nice, like this one, we don't need to do too much to it, but on the rest of them, we might need to do a little bit, for example, on this one, so he's not a bit too flat and boring. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to paint in all of the tacks, so the, the kind of the girdle and the reins and the bridle and all that kind of thing and we're going to be using two colors for this but not on the same models we're just doing this at the same time just to save time so on our darker ones what we're going to do is we're going to use some flesh terrors red and on our more brighter ones we're going to use some wildwood and this is going to create a little bit of variation across the force and it's going to look pretty cool so for example on this guy he's very dark and it's a black horse so we're just going to use the Flesh Terrors Red here, rather than using the Wildwood. Just to give it something interesting to look at, really. that. I'm going to do the rest of the straps as well. However, on this one, for example, I'm going to use the Wildwood.
So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some skeleton horde and we're going to apply this over our horse's teeth. Just like that. Now the ones that are rearing their heads up have also got their tongues out, so we'll be painting them in a moment if you're wondering what that thing there is in the middle of the mouth. Just whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Dark Angels Green and we're going to apply this over the top of the saddle cloth. So with those saddle cloths painted in, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Volupus Pink. We're going to use this to paint in the tongues on our horses. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Iron Warriors. We're going to use this to paint in the armour on the horse's head. horse's bit and any of the other little bits of metallic tack like this and so with that done we're then going to take some Saigor Brown I'm going to apply this to the saddle. Just like this. And so with that done, it's now time to add a shade to all of our horses. And the color we're going to be using is once again Targor Raid Shade. I'm going to be using this to shade our red and our brown leather tack, so the reins and bridles and girdles and things like that. And we're going to be using this to shade the metallic as well. Just like that. So with that done, all of our horses are now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. So there's one, there's another, there's the third, fourth and fifth. And sixth. They're looking pretty cool. So we're going to pause painting the horses for now because what we're going to do is we're going to move on to painting the riders. Now we're only going to focus on one rider but we're going to be painting all six and this is because as mentioned previously we've already done this on the Warriors of Rohan. The recipes are pretty much exactly the same. So we're just going to quickly blast through the riders I'm going to film one, but we're going to be doing this on all six. And if you want a kind of more in depth than what we're going to do now, just rewind the video and watch the Warriors of Rohan section of the video. But with that in mind, the first place we're going to start is on all of their cloaks as before. And the color we're going to be using for that is Dark Angels Green. And we're also going to be picking out the shields as well with this color. You just want to start getting this on and then once that's done we'll come back. So with that Dark Angels Green applied what we then do is we take our wild wood and we apply this over the top of the wood and those kind of leather skirt trousers type things.
as well as any belts and straps. And then next up, we use some Black Legion. We're gonna use this to paint in his trousers, his undershirt, and his boots. And with that done, we're then gonna take some Saigor Brown. I'm gonna apply this to the leg greaves, to the arm, armors, the helmets, the quivers, and any kind of other structured leather, such as the scabbard of the sword over here. So with that done, I'm then gonna take some skeleton hoard and use this to paint in the hair, the beard, and the design on the shield. With that skeleton horde applied, we then take some flesh terrors red and we use that to paint in any grips and any fletchings on any of the arrows. So with that then done, we're going to take some iron warriors. We're going to apply this to all of the silver. So there's all the blades and all of the kind of chain armor. So with that done, we then take some Gilliman flesh and we're going to apply this over his skin. So his hands and any visible features of the face. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Retributor armor. I'm going to use this to paint in pretty much all of our remaining details. So we've got the top of the saddle just there. Like that, you can see a little bit of it just under there. So with that done, we're now going to add the shades. And the first one is Targor Raid Shade. And we're going to be applying this over the silver, the wildwood leather, and the gold. And with that Targor Raid Shade applied to all those details, we're then going to take some Pox Walker. We use that to shade the green cloak. So with that done, our Rider of Rohan is now at what I would call a War Hipster battle ready. So what we're going to do is we're now going to highlight up our Rider of Rohan and then we're going to go back to finishing off the horses. So the first colour we're going to be using is War Boss Green, just like we did before on the Warriors of Rohan. I'm just going to take this and we're just going to very carefully highlight the green Just like this. So with that done, we're then going to take that iron hand steel and use that to highlight all the silver. And with that iron hand still applied, we then take some Retributor armor. We use this to relayer and highlight our gold details once more. So with that done, we're then going to take some Screaming Skull. We're going to use this to highlight his beard and his mustache.
So with that done, we're then going to take some flayed one flesh. We're just going to use this to highlight his face. Ah, we've even got his mouth on this one. So with that done, all of our riders are now at the same level. They're in the finished state. However, we do now have these horses that we need to finish off. But just to show you, we've got these two riders just here. We've got these two riders just here. We've got these two riders just here as well. They're all looking pretty awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to finish off all of those horses. And we're going to pick up Old Faithful here. Now the colour we're going to start with is Dawnstone. And we're going to be using this to highlight all of the hooves and we're going to use this to highlight all of the black hair. Now we do have a couple with brown, so you don't want to highlight them with Dawnstone. But on the hooves, what we want to do is we want to draw lots and lots of little lines going across the hoof. Just like that. We also want to pick out the edge. Once again. Just like that. Similarly, on the hair, we're just going to turn our brush to the side. And we're just going to pick out the strands of the horse hair. Like this. With that done, as you can see, all of the hooves and the black hair are done. And yeah, you have to take my word for it that I've done it on the rest of them. But what we're also going to do is we're going to take some scrag brown now. And on our brown horse's tails and hair, we're just going to do the same thing here. We're just going to Give it a little bit of a highlight by turning our brush to the side and just picking out the strands. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Screaming Skull and we're going to use this to have a little dot in the back corner of each of the horse's eyes. Like so. So with that done, what we're going to do now is we're going to finish off the horse's flesh and we're going to do it all one by one. Unfortunately, that's what happens when you have six different recipes in one video. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the white horse. Now this one's fairly simple because what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down grey sear and we're going to apply this over the flats of our horse's muscles. Just like this. Now it might take a couple of coats just to do this. But we're just looking to essentially just restore a little bit of brightness into the muscles. And this will just give us a little bit of structure to the horse's muscles as well. As you can see, just like that. So with that done, this horse is now finished. And I should also state that this horse is finished. We haven't done any highlights to it, but it already looks fantastic with the shading that's already gone on. So we don't need to do anything else to that. So these two are finished. So we can pop them to one side. And in that similar vein, these two are finished as well because of the shading and those first coats. It already looks fantastic. And if we add any highlights to it at this point, might just detract from the complete nature of these horses. They look fantastic already. So those two are going to be put to one side. However, we are going to do some highlights on these two horses. Now we're going to start with this one. And the colour we're going to be using 
is Storm Vermin Fur. We're just going to take a small amount of this on our brush and we're just going to start picking out the edges of the muscles with the Storm Vermin Fur. It's going to be quite a subtle highlight, but it's just going to add that little bit of structure that we're after. So with that done, that's another horse in the done books. It's very, very subtle highlighting on there. It's just enough to make it pop, which is really nice. It's quite difficult to see under the lights. So I do appreciate that. So what we're gonna do is pop that one to one side and we're gonna highlight our final horse. And the color we're gonna be using for this is Dark Reaper. And it's again, similar to the previous one, we're just gonna be picking out the edges of the muscles. It's going to be quite a subtle highlight again against the black. So with that done, as you can see, our horses and our riders are now all finished, here we are. Look at them, they look fantastic. The Riders of Rohan. Just looking absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I love them so much. Excellent stuff. So we're gonna pop them to one side now and we're done. we're not. We have the main event. We have Eomer, the Marshal of the Riddermark. Now we do have the on foot version and we have the on version on horse. Now I've given them both a sword and a shield and the horse has the horse armor as well because it's just you know, it just looks absolutely epic. So for the majority of this painting tutorial, in fact for the entirety of this, we're going to be focusing on this AMA. There's no difference between the two in terms of what we're painting. The only difference is that one has a horse. Yes, we're not done with painting horses. I mean, this one, we're going to do some very special stuff with this horse. So grab your paints, grab your brushes, and we'll get started. So rather unsurprisingly, the place we're going to start on AMA is on the horse. If you're not sick of horses already, you're collecting the right army. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and black legion. And we're going to use this over the top of all of the horse's flesh, excluding the horse's head. And that's nicely partitioned here on the cheek. So we're just going to start painting this all over. Now, the reason that we've thinned it down with a bit of contrast medium is because, well, black legion has this kind of brownish quality to it when it's not applied too thickly. And that's exactly what we want here. So we're gonna go up to around about there, like that, and you can see already, there's that slight little bit of brown in there. Just whilst we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna take Black Legion on its own, no contrast medium. I'm gonna use this to paint in the horse's hair. You can see the difference there between the thinned down Black Legion. And the non-thinned down Black Legion.
And so with that done, whilst we're still waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Nuln oil and we're going to apply this over the top of the horse's face. So with that Nuln oil applied to the face, still continuing with the Nuln oil, what we're going to do now, now that the body is dry, is we're going to do a recess shade here. Just like this, just add a little bit of depth in. Just like this. So with that done, our horse is looking somewhat like this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some storm vermin fur and we're going to stipple it on in various little locations. So what we want to do is we're going to take a ratty old dry brush. Now I've got this old small dry brush from the army painter, as you can see. It's seen much better days. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a small amount of this on our brush, on our storm vermin fur. I'm just going to get it on the tip like that. Then on some tissue paper, we're just going to start stabbing it into the tissue paper until we get to that kind of consistency like that. And then around the muscles, we're going to start stippling this on very gently, very carefully. Just like this, we want to build it up very slowly around the legs and up the neck. Just like this. It'll take probably two or three passes. So with that storm vermin fur applied, what we're then going to do is exactly the same thing, only a lot smaller. Only this time we're going to be doing it with grey sear. So we're just going to once again stipple this in and then we're just going to very gently Start building it up like this. So with that done, all the way around, as you can see, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Targal Raid Shade. I'm going to use this to shade the horse's flesh once again. And this time, we're not going to kind of really cover it in. What we're going to do is we're just going to start applying this like this. Just taking small amounts at a time. making sure not to really drown it. Now, we're gonna get this all over the back of the horse, like that sort of thing. Add a little bit more there on the end. And then up here on the 
neck, we want to concentrate the Targal Raid Shade towards the bottom of the horse, horse's neck, coming up to that, the bridle, the reins, and we're just going to wash the brush, we're just going to take a little bit of that off, like that, because we want it to kind of come up from this brown to the white. We can kind of layer it on a little bit thicker down here. So it kind of starts to fade, fade through, like so. So with that done, you should have some pretty awesome looking horse flesh all the way around. However, we're not quite finished. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Corax White very small amounts of this and we're going to do towards the whiter areas on the head we're going to add little dots we're not going to do straight highlights here this is almost like a stippling motion I mean it pretty much is a stippling motion So with that done, the horse's flesh is now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to start painting in all of the horse's kind of tack, but not the leather of the armoured stuff on the horse. That's going to be a slightly different colour. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and Saigor brown. I'm going to use this to pick out all of our leather. So with that Cygore Brown mix applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Gore Grunter fur. I'm going to use this to paint in the trim of the armour on the horse, like so. As well as the non-metallic parts like that bit just under there. Better example of it would be to do it here. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Creed Camo. I'm going to do two layers of this over the top of the shield and the saddle cloth. So the saddle cloth is just under here. I'm going to do two layers of this because we want this to be nice and dark. One layer just doesn't really cut it. But it is a different colour in the box art to the Riders of Rohan. Same thing for the shield. So with those two layers of Creed camo applied to these areas, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down lead belcher. I'm going to use this to paint in the silver parts of the armour, the horse armour. So with that done, we're then going to take some thinned down retributor armour. I'm going to use this to paint in the this bit, I still haven't looked it up. Been painting these for a couple of days now, and I still haven't looked up what it's called. Again, let me know in the comments. We'll 
also going to be using this Retributor armor to paint in all the little bits of jewelry on the horse's tack. So with that done, we're then going to take a tiny amount of grey seal once again. And this time we're going to use this to pick out the design on the shield. With that grey seal applied, we then want to take a teeny tiny amount of Black Legion. We want to paint this over the top of the horse's eyes. Like so. So with that done, all of the base coats are now on. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a shade to the horse. And the color we're going to be using for this is Targor Raid Shade. Now we're going to be getting this over the top of all of our Gorgrunter fur, over the top of all of our silver, and over the top of all of our gold details. And everything else we're going to leave exactly as it is. So with that done, the horse is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. So we're going to move on for now. We're going to move on to the main man himself and then we'll highlight all of it at the end because there aren't a ton of highlights to do on the horse, but rather than do it now and then do AMR, it just makes sense in my head at least anyway. So what we're going to do is the first color we're going to use on AMR himself is Black Legion. I'm going to be using this over the top of his boots, his trousers, and his shirt and gloves. So with that done, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some Blood Angels Red. I'm gonna use this over the top of all of AMS red leather armor. So with that done, we're then going to take some Saigor Brown. I'm going to use this to paint in our remaining leather details. So this is this little pouch here on his hip and the little straps holding on his braces and things like that. Just anything that looks vaguely leathery to you that we haven't already painted in. And with that done, we're then going to take some Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to use this to paint in the mane, or the plume, I should say, actually, of his helmet. And with that done, we then take some Skeleton Horde and we use this to paint in his hair. As well as his beard. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down lead belcher. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the silver details. So this is all of all of the mail. There is two different colours of mail and scale mail on here. But we're just going to be painting this lead belcher across all of it because we're going to do something pretty cool. Or 
Michael's going to be painting in the kind of panels of his helmet, his sword. But we don't need to worry about doing the silver on the majority of the armour because it does have silver flecks in around all of the kind of decoration. We don't need to do that just yet. So with that lead belt applied, what we're then going to do is take some gore grunt of fur and we're going to apply this over the top of the chain mail, but not the scale mail. So with that gore grunt of fur applied, we then take some Gilliman flesh. I'm going to use this to paint in Aemir's face. And with that done, we're now just going to paint in what is basically all of the remaining details with some thinned down Retributor armour. Just like this. So with that done, for the last time in this video, it's time to add a shade. And the shade is going to be, for the last time, Targor Raid Shade. I'm going to be using this on all of the silver, all of the gold, and all of the red. So with that done, Aemir, the whole thing is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready, looking pretty awesome. However, we're not going to leave him there. No, we are going to add some highlights, take him to the next level. Now, the first one we're going to add is Iron Hand Steel, starting with metallics here. And because what we're going to be doing here is going to be just, it's very fiddly. <laughs> what we're going to be doing is we're going to be filling in the silver parts on the red armor. And the reason we didn't do this earlier was because we needed to shade all of that red. And we want that detail on the armor to be nice and bright and shiny. So we're just gonna go in there now. You don't have to do every single one. You just wanna pick out the ones that you feel comfortable with, like so. There are some slightly easier ones. For example, I think it's pauldrons. If you want to add the silver to. Like that sort of thing. Same for his leg plates. What we're also going to do with the iron hand steel, whilst we're here, is we're going to use this to relayer all of our silver armor and also highlight the sword. So with that iron hand steel applied now, as you can see, to all of those areas around the model, he has taken a huge leap forward. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some thinned down Jacaro orange I'm going to use this to highlight two different areas. So we're going to use this to highlight any of our gore grunt of fur. Leather. Down here on the horse. So like that. So really, again, a better demonstration would be this side.
like that sort of thing. And similarly, we're going to use Jacaro Orange to highlight the red. So with that done, as you can see, the majority of the model is now finished. So what we're going to do is going to pick up all those last few bits. And the first color we're going to be using is Liberator Gold. I'm going to be using this to highlight all of the gold. So with that done, we're then going to take some Screaming Skull. I'm going to use this to highlight his hair. And his beard. As well as at the whites of the horse's eyes. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some flayed one flesh. And we use this to highlight his face. And with that done, we want to use a teeny tiny tiny amount of Volupus Pink. I'm going to use this on his tongue. And then next up, we want to use a teeny teeny tiny amount of Black Legion. Use this colour in his eyes. Just like that. And then finally on the face we're going to take a teeny tiny tiny dot of Screaming Skull. I'm just going to add that in the left hand corner of each of the eyes to make it look like he's looking off that way. So with the face all finished, it's time for something a little bit easier. What we're going to do is we're going to take some War Boss Green. I'm going to use this to highlight the shield. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Gorthor Brown. We're going to use this to highlight any of our remaining darker leather. And with that done, we're then going to highlight all of the black details, including the horse's hair and his boots and shirt and all that using some Dawnstone. And there we have it. The best thing ever. <laughs> I, The Two Towers is, I think, my one of it would definitely be in my top five films of all time and i love the riders of rohan i love eomer i love theoden i just everything about them is so fantastic and just speaks to me on such a nostalgic level so i'm kind of a little bit lost for the words watching this clip myself i painted the things and i just absolutely love it if you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these awesome folks have done. And if you really loved this one and you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. 
Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.